So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship and just give you all some context on why the scholarship exists, what are the benefits of the scholarship, what does the application process look like, as well as some insightful tips on things to focus on throughout your application process. So I hope you find this information pretty useful and helpful. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the history of the Udall Foundation and how it came into existence. So the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship honors the legacies of Morris Udall and Stuart Udall, whose careers had a significant impact on the American Indian self-governance, healthcare, as well as stewardship of public lands and natural resources. Um, the scholarship is open to sophomores and juniors who are interested in studying and working in environmental areas or who are Native Americans who intend to make a positive difference in Indian country whether that be for your tribe or Indian country as a whole. And the program benefits include access to the Udall Alumni Network, a four-day orientation down in Tucson, a professional development event, as well as up to $7,000 that can be applied towards any academic expenses. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more and explain exactly what all of that consists of. So who should apply? As I previously mentioned, this scholarship is open to second and third year students, so sophomores and juniors, who are passionate about using your career to benefit either the environment or Indian country or your tribe. Like I said before, um, Udall is open for students pretty much studying a variety of majors. It doesn't really have to be a particular major, as you can see the list of majors on the screen, there are quite a few. And as you can see at the bottom, uh, there's even opportunity for other majors that may not be listed on here. So the nice thing about Udall is that you don't necessarily have to have a specific major in order to apply, as long as you have somewhat of a tie to the environment or identify as Native American and have an interest in giving back to Indian country, whether that be through tribal policy or Native healthcare, then you should definitely consider applying for the scholarship. Udall isn't necessarily looking for, again, a specific major. They are pretty open, and as long as your personal and career interest are along the lines of something related to the environment or giving back to Indian country itself, then definitely uh, go ahead and apply for this scholarship. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about what the scholarship actually provides and what those benefits consist of exactly. So like I mentioned, you can receive up to $7,000 uh, eligible for academic expenses. So what that means is your academic expenses would consist of books, tuition, room, board, things like that. So that $7,000 could be applied towards any of those expenses, but they must be academic related. You'll also gain access to the Udall Alumni Network, which I've been told is actually one of the most beneficial pieces of the, being a Udall recipient. Outside of the monetary value of the scholarship, gaining access to the Udall Alumni Network is very beneficial because you're getting access to a group of individuals who are currently actively working in the field of your interests. These are change makers who are either working in Indian country or environmental fields, and you have the opportunity to engage in innovative ideas with them, get some professional advice, as well as open yourself up to any job or potential internship opportunities. So that network is very beneficial and meaningful to have the opportunity to connect with those who are already in your field. And this Udall Alumni Network consists of past recipients who are out there currently and actively making difference in the environmental field as well as Indian country. So having access to those connections is definitely going to allow you to be set up for your future once you graduate here, or even in the meantime, in the summer in between, if you're looking for an internship. And then, as I had mentioned before, you will attend the five-day orientation down in Tucson, Arizona, which takes place at the beginning of August. And this is, again, is the opportunity to engage with the other UDAL recipients from this cycle, as well as the past UDAL recipients. You get to network, exchange some ideas, you get to learn new skills by engaging in a group case study, 
And then it's really cool because you get to exchange ideas across different perspectives. So like I had said, since this is so open to many different majors, you get to hear the different perspectives of how different majors and different ideas are influenced depending on the field that you're coming from. So it really gives you the opportunity to work with those who may be like-minded, but also gain new perspectives and think a little bit more outside of the box as to how to approach the case studies and come up with some significant solutions to the issues that you are addressing. So here are some statistics on our ASU past UDAL recipients. Every year UDAL looks to award between 50 and 60 uh, UDAL scholars and a total of 50 honorable mentions. So at the honorable mention, you do not receive the monetary aspect of the scholarship, but you do still gain access to that UDAL alumni network that I had talked a lot about. And again, uh, knowing that you have access to that network, it's very beneficial, meaningful, because you still have the opportunity to be exposed to the different internship opportunities, as well as future career positions that may open up that people who are currently out there in the field are promoting and looking for people like yourselves to apply for. And then UDAL kind of operates where you can apply for one of three categories that they offer. So those three categories consist of the environmental, tribal public policy, or native healthcare, which I'll talk about each of those categories coming up. But across those categories, there would still be a total of 50 to 60 UDAL scholars, as well as 50 honorable mentions. For us, specifically here at ASU, we have had a total of 27 recipients since the year 2000, and then we have had a total of eight honorable mentions for UDAL. So as you can see, we definitely have had quite a few UDAL scholars in the past, and your chances of applying to this scholarship and becoming a UDAL scholar for ASU is highly likely. In total, we can nominate up to eight students to apply, and I'll talk a little bit more of what that process looks like a little bit later, but essentially, depending on how many students apply, you'll go through a screening process where you'd be interviewed, we'll review all the submitted applications, and from there we'll determine if you are eligible to be pushed forward in the process to be one of the eight students that we send applications to the UDAL Foundation for the foundation to review to determine if you would be an eligible UDAL scholar. So now I'm going to talk more about the different categories that you can apply for through UDAL. The first one being the UDAL Tribal Policy. In order to apply for this category, you do have to identify as Native American or Alaska Native. And again, you must be a sophomore or junior. You also must be someone who has a demonstrated commitment to Indian country through participation in cultural activities and service within your own community. And that can be specifically in your community or even activities you may be engaged in on campus that are still related to moving forward and actively showing your commitment to Indian country. And then you must have a career interest that enables them to make a difference for the tribe or for Native and Alaska Natives as a whole. The next category you could apply for is the UDAL Native Healthcare category. For this category, you must also identify as Native American or Alaska Native. Again, you must be a sophomore or junior, and then must be someone who's interested in improving healthcare practice and delivery in Indian country or contributing to healthcare policy and research. You must also have that demonstrated commitment to Indian country through participation in cultural activities and or community service, and someone who's working towards a career that enables you to impact healthcare for your tribe or Native Americans and Alaska Natives as a whole. So again, as you can see for the first two categories, you must identify as Native American in order to be eligible to apply to either of those categories as a UDAL applicant. But again, although it's tribal policy as well as healthcare, you don't have to specifically be studying political science or public health, but something related to those fields and to those areas of study, or again, just have a genuine interest in making an impact and difference in those areas, and you would definitely still be 
eligible to apply. The third category that you can apply for for UDAL is the environmental impact category. So what's great about this category is it is open to everyone. You do not have to identify as Native American or Alaska Native to apply to this category. So this one is for anyone who is interested in conservation, environmental stewardship, or environmental policy. You must have demonstrated a commitment to the environment through either participation in campus activities or through your campus community or the community at large and an individual who is working towards a career that enables you to address environmental issues on a local or national or global scale. So as long as you have somewhat of a tie to doing work that's relevant to giving back to the environment and making a difference environmentally and really showing that impact, you could certainly apply for this category. Just as long as you have some type of career goals and interests that plan on impacting the environment positive, positively, then certainly consider applying for this category. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the actual application process in terms of what exactly you'll have to do step-by-step step if you want to apply for UDAL. And I'll talk a little bit more about the support that would be provided to you throughout that process. So I recommend the first step to always visit the actual scholarship website. So you'd wanna take a look at that www.udall.gov website. On that website, it'll give you a great overview of what the scholarship categories are that I kind of just covered. It'll give you timelines. Any and all information that you need will be on the website. I also always recommend taking a look at the FAQ section, which is the frequently asked questions, because that's always a great resource for any scholarship program that you may be applying for, because it really goes through in detail and answers any and every question that they could possibly think of that applicants may have. So definitely take a look at that frequently asked question page before asking any further questions that you may have. If you don't find your question on that frequently asked question page, certainly feel free to send me an email. My email is listed on the screen, or you can also contact the UDAL Foundation themselves and you can find their contact information on their website and they're more than happy to answer whatever questions you may have. So if you take a look to the right of the screen, this is an actual screenshot from the UDAL Undergraduate Scholarship website. And again, this is what you would see if you click on the UDAL Undergraduate Scholarship Apply. So from here, this is where you would actually receive access to your application. All those application materials would be finalized and submitted through the UDAL Foundation website. If you look going down the screen, it does say the application deadline is March 5th, 2020. We actually have a different deadline for our campus, which would be Tuesday, February 11th, 2020 by 5 p.m. All of your materials must be submitted to our office. That includes your letters of recommendation as well. The reason why we have an earlier deadline goes back to the point I had made earlier about the fact that we can only nominate eight students to move forward to send your official application to the UDAL Foundation itself. So the reason being having the earlier deadline allows us to have time to read through all of the applications that have been submitted here at ASU and then allow you to have an interview set up with our campus committee for UDAL just to get a better sense of who you are, ask some questions based on some things that you provided in your application and then to ultimately determine if you'd be a good fit to move forward in the process. And then from there, that's when the UDAL Foundation would have the final say in if you become a UDAL scholar or not. And that process is to also provide you with a little bit of support. So if you were to move forward in the process, you would still obviously have plenty of time to make any final adjustments or edits based on feedback that would be given to you during that interview process. So what exactly does the UDAL application consist of? As you can see on the screen, there is an 11 question application. So what that is, is essentially 11 short answer questions that really get at trying to get a better understanding of who you are as a person. 
So really ask, what are some things that you're currently involved in that really speak to what UDAL is looking for in their scholars? Where are you looking to go in the future in terms of your career? And how can UDAL really provide you with an experience that will assist you on making that career possible? So again, it's just the opportunity to get a better personal aspect as to who you are and if you really align with what UDAL is looking for in their scholars. The next component of your application would be an 800 word essay on a speech, a legislative act, book, public policy statement by either Stuart or Morris Udall and the impact that it has on your interests and goals related to you personally, professionally, and academically. So where are you looking to go? How does the work of the Udalls really speak to your interests? Does it align? If so, how does it align? And what are some things that kind of inspire your work based off of what the Udalls have done or said through any of those materials? All of those materials you can actually access through the University of Arizona website uh, through their library. So UDAL actually provides instructions and a little bit more information on how you can access those materials on their website and they provide some links and things like that. So I highly recommend actually utilizing that resource because that's going to give you the best access to materials that you would want to utilize and incorporate in that 800 word essay on one of those things by the UDALs. The next component of your application material would be a transcript of all your coursework. An unofficial transcript is acceptable um, upon initial upload of all of your scholarship material. And then lastly, you'll need a total of three letters of recommendation that really speak to your leadership, public service, and academic achievements. So that's obviously going to be something that you kind of want to take the time to map out and really consider who are you going to ask to write you these letters of recommendation, who knows your work fairly well, and who can really speak to the characteristics that you have that make you a strong applicant for you doll. And you also want to kind of start to map out that timeline a little bit earlier because you want to ensure you're giving your recommenders plenty of time to write you a great letter that really speaks to the work that you've done. So from there, if you're still considering applying for UDAL, you would want to email your resume and copy of an unofficial transcript to the email provided on the screen. And then you would schedule a meeting to come in so we can get a better sense of who you are, chat with you a little bit more about the scholarship, answer any final questions that you may have. And we would actually have to register you in the UDAL website to allow you to have access to the application, which would be found online on the UDAL website. And then from there, you can work on the application. And then again, you would request your three letters for reference, get those unofficial transcripts, and then make sure that you have all of your application materials into us by Tuesday, February 11th by 5 p.m. Now a little bit of advice and things to consider while you're drafting up and writing your actual written materials for your scholarship application. You'll want to illustrate any leadership potential as well as commitment to public service that you have throughout your scholarship application. So like I had said earlier that 11, page, 11 question application component is really where you would answer and highlight a lot of those aspects of yourself. So it really gives a better look into who you are as an individual personally. So really talk about any leadership aspects that you have in terms of different organizations you may be involved in on campus or even some things that you're involved in outside of campus that show you are a strong leader as well as your commitment to public service or the environment as a whole. You also want to try to think of some ways that you can share some positive solutions that you may have worked on in the past, whether that be through your involvement in an organization, maybe in a group project that you've had in class, or again, something that's work-related that you do outside and off campus, or something that you have worked on to make a difference in Indian country as a whole. So 
just making sure that you're being mindful of what you doll is looking for and how the things that you have already done and what you want to do really align with the goals and the mission of you doll itself. Moving forward, you also want to articulate a career path. So make sure that it's evident in your application what it is that you really want to do. And again, going back to that alignment, does it really speak to what you doll is looking for in a scholar and what they have to offer? Can it really set you up for your future path? Being mindful of that access to the network that you'll gain and the different opportunities. What are some ways that you really see you doll affecting your career path for the better? And then again, the best applicants will truly just keep that UDAL motto in mind, which considers civility, integrity, as well as consensus. So what are some actions and things that you're currently working on that really speak to those characteristics? And do know that throughout your entire application process, you do have support. So once you get to a good point in your drafts through that 11 question application or the 800 word speech, you can email those materials over to the email provided on the screen and I'll provide my email in the upcoming slide as well. And once you have a solid draft, you can send those over to me directly and I'll happily review them, provide feedback and send them back to you as long as it's prior to that February 11th deadline. And the reason being, this will give you plenty of time to revise and make any final adjustments or edits and ultimately to ensure that you're on the right track in terms of the things that you're highlighting and mentioning about yourself throughout the application, just to ensure that you can increase your chances of being an eligible candidate to become a UDAL scholar. So lastly, here on the screen, you can see there's a link to our website, so just the onsa.asu.edu. You can find a little bit more further information on there about UDAL. But like I had mentioned earlier, I strongly recommend taking a further look at the UDAL website itself because that will be the best resource in terms of answering any questions you may have. But again, if there are any further questions that you can't find to be answered on the website, definitely feel free to reach out to me. My email is there and provided to you. And throughout the process of your application, once you get to a good solid draft, definitely send it over to me. I'm happy to review to provide feedback and answer any questions that come up. And lastly, you can always schedule an appointment to come in person. So if you'd rather talk things through in person or you have any questions or you feel that you're getting stuck on your application, definitely reach out, make an appointment, come in, and we can talk a little bit more through your application and make some edits and go through some thoughts or ideas that you may have. So thank you for your time today. I hope that you definitely consider applying for UDAL. And let me know if you have any questions.